Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and welcome to another video. I got two interesting topics for this week's video. First, the editor. Um, if you've been with the channel and watched it a couple of weeks ago, I had to uh, build a level editor for Regulator City, the game I'm working on. And I was very reluctant and wasn't really in the mood to create one. But now that it's up and running, I'm pretty happy with it. So I've been tinkering with it some more. Um, we have a huge amount of uh, objects in the game. I think we're around 140 now and also alternate for some of those objects. Uh, DMAC, the intern, uh, check him out on Discord, has been very busy creating just all the type of objects you can think of. We have couches, cabinets, we now have arcade cabinets, we have uh, showers, kitchens, uh, bed tubs with animated duckies in there, we have hospital beds with people in there. We have a lot of stuff. And that also requires a lot of management because uh, if you want to create levels and you want to play stuff um, it's very hard to browse through all those objects every time i'm gonna get into that because i built something this week that made it a lot easier the second thing is going to be a little bit technical but very much worth it uh, and very interesting to talk about i'll try to keep it in a non-technical terms and explain the steps and the things but it has to do with the squad AI. And this game is real-time squad tactics. So uh, one of the key things I had to build for this game, and I knew this was gonna be like the biggest problem I, or biggest hurdle I would run into. Um, my squad, once I let them go, has to have some type of intelligence and um, move around the level and know what to do. I had no idea how to build that. So the last two weeks I've spent all my time learning a bunch of new things and it's not bad it's up and running it's not perfect it's not there yet but it's not bad so um let's do the intro and then um, we're gonna talk about these things intro first we're gonna talk about the editor and all the stuff um what you see here on the screen these are all the animation and objects and sprites and stuff that we uh, have now been create. Well, Dylan, most of these are created by Dylan, the intern. Uh, it's a lot of artwork and it's a lot of static stuff that's just in the game to make it look interesting. Um, but it's very cool to have all this. And this is not all, uh, there's just, there is a lot of stuff here. These are the new things just added. We have park, trees, statues. Uh, there's a lot of uh, pixel pushing going on. Let me just first show you the stuff I've been doing in the editor and how the editor is now working. Um, let's dive into it. Okay, so uh, let's hop into Regulator City and press the F1 button to open up the editor. I had a lot of questions about this and um, the plan is, or at least I'm designing the level editor in a user-friendly way with the idea that eventually it will be available in the PC version of the game so you guys can just go crazy create levels and and play stuff and now i'm not really sure yet how usable it will be in the end but i am keeping it in my mind that um, a lot of people actually want a level editor so we'll try to make this uh, available for all of you now let's just uh, check this is a pretty simple level uh, this is the headquarters we now have the arcade stuff over here and um, like i said there's a lot of entities so what i did was group them these all still need a good icon, but you can see the name, uh, office stuff, hospital stuff, nature, industrial, junk, storage, lights, bedroom, uh, vehicles, and kitchen. And we'll have a lot more, uh, or maybe a few more, or maybe I'll also add one or two custom groups so people can change those. Because this icon under here, uh, group editor, this uh, will allow you to browse through all the items we have, all the objects, and then uh, check mark in which group they should be a part of. So this one is in technology and living rooms, and uh, you can just pretty much go through all the objects and uh, assign them to groups. This is all done already for everything that's in the game right now, but you can always change them uh, as the end user. If you just prefer to have certain things in a certain group, you can change that and it will allow you to uh, make it easier to quickly find stuff that you want to place in your buildings. So um, yeah, it's a lot of stuff here. 
Uh, these are things like vehicles and uh, we have hospitals. This should also be a possible for bedrooms. If somebody wants a bed like this in their bedroom, why not? Uh, you can just check mark it on. And um, that's pretty much how I'm now grouping everything. And so if we escape out of this and if I now quickly want to add technology, I uh, will quick the, we'll select the technology stuff and then scroll wheel will go to everything that's part of this group and ignore everything else. So it's a lot easier to quickly find TVs, computers, uh, devices and um, things like that. Not sure. Yeah, there's still a little bug. That's why you see a poker table every now and then, which shouldn't be part of it. But eh, it's a bug. It, I'll, I'll fix it before you guys um, get your hands on this. Unless you're a patron, then this is already available. Um, like I said, go into a game, press the F1 button and you'll be in the editor. And... Uh, Press that little uh, play button bottom left to go back and um, te test your level, pretty much. So that's it for uh, the non-technical stuff, the editor. And um, it's a lot of fun toying around with the editor, but most of my time has been spent on the technical stuff. Now, my rule when I create a new game is to just try only one, maybe two new things in that game. Uh, so that you don't get out of scope or that you don't run into stuff you can't handle and then have to abandon the whole project or whatever. And for this game, the new thing, the big new thing was squad tactics, AI, uh, advanced AI. I call it advanced, it might be very simple for many others, but for me, it felt like very advanced stuff. Um, my team has to operate within the level uh, pretty much and where possible alone, on their own, as much as possible. Um, of course, the players should be able to give commands as the leader, but um, the whole thing, the whole idea for this game is that feeling that you see in um, TV shows like SEAL teams and uh, SWAT and movies like that, where a team operates as one. You have to trust the other members of your team. That requires uh, AI and I had no idea where to start with this. So last week I just decided to Google for this and, and there's actually a very good talk on um, GDC Vault, I think. I'll link it in the description below. Um, they talk about how it's done in some of the AAA type games. Like I think there's someone from Guerrilla Games who created Killzone and there are a bunch of other people. And uh, I just tried to follow whatever they explained in the video and started building it step by step. Um, it was a lot of new stuff, a lot of new things to learn, but I think the results um, are pretty interesting. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not perfect yet. There are still some things where uh, they mess up, but even in AAA there are a lot of games where AI isn't really doing the things you expect them to. So I'm trying to just get close to that because this whole game idea is um, built on top of that. Of course, I have a safe way out and in case this isn't gonna help or work. We're gonna either be uh, dumping the whole squad idea, maybe have a solo player, you alone, um, moving around like, like a hitman or something. Still a cool concept. Or we'll have you as a team, but um, every time one of, of the main guy dies first and you only have three left, two left, one left. There are a couple of ways I can spin the game design or the gameplay and still create this game but preferably I have a intelligent squad running around with the player so uh, let me just show you what's going on right now and then I'll just show you step by step uh, because there's a lot of debug code that I can show you uh, visual stuff and um, I'm gonna show you step by step how I built this and how it's performing right now so let's start a new game regulator city um, I'm gonna cheat myself or no, wait, I'm going to first go into the headquarters and just uh, show you what the idea is. So we can now split up and you'll see those two guys moving around. Uh, let's move over here. We can give them a little bit of a command, uh, move over there. And you'll notice already that these little dots are uh, is what they decide is the best route from there to there. So we can also uh, have them move over there. And they get us stuck a little bit. Uh, the problem here is that this is called pathfinding, A star pathfinding, and uh, all these red crosses are part of their path, but they're smoothing out 
every step that isn't needed. For, for some reason, they're smoothing out a few too many steps, causing them to sometimes um, get blocked by items, mostly entities and objects in the game. So um, that's just something I have to fix. It mostly has to do with what they're checking for. But in most of the cases, it's going pretty well. Now, this is fun that they're moving around and everything and that they know where to go. Um, let me show you how they know where to go by turning on nodes. So this is the first thing I learned from the video. Um, having nodes in your level. Now, this is a really a weird idea. Just um, something I usually didn't do. And these nodes are created by simply placing them around objects that are big enough for the characters to hide behind. So uh, the lamp has some around them, the couch has four around them, these have them around them, and then of course uh, everything and corners should also have them. And we only see the green ones because that's the direction the player is looking at. We don't have to uh, do anything with all the nodes on this side because we're not gonna move in that direction anyway. So we're already filtering out a bunch of nodes as you can see, they are there. Doors always have two nodes around them and uh, nodes everywhere. And these green nodes are pretty much um, where these guys are focusing on. So if I move them over here, you will notice one of these nodes starts turning white and that's the target node they have planned like this one. And they'll move over there and then hide behind the lamp. Of course, the lamp is a stupid object to hide behind. But like I said, they're intelligent, but not extremely intelligent. So that's step one, having nodes in your level and having them move around. Now let's see if we can open a level that actually has some bad guys in there. Uh, is this the one with the garden? Yeah, let's go into the garden. All right, so uh, split up and this is now uh, where the enemies are. And I'm gonna turn on something else. Collision detection boxes everywhere, uh, but these red squares are important because that's all the stuff that these enemies are seeing. Which pre pretty much means that all the nodes that are now within red squares are ignored by our team. They are not gonna be moving up there because they'll be seen and spotted. So um, it's not safe for them to move into those spots. That's uh, pretty much the second step. Filter out dangerous areas and uh, that lets us avoid enemies. Of course, this will be um, more interesting once uh, you'll be able to attack them and have maybe some characteristics like certain soldiers are much more eager to just um, ignore the red squares and fight and shoot their way and into or out to areas. Uh, that's just a bunch of stuff we're gonna be uh, working with. And that's just a lot of stuff that's uh, being calculated and uh, used now for um, moving around. We can just uh, shoot everybody we don't really care and we're gonna breach this door and we're gonna see if these guys can uh, come and help us there they are getting stuck behind again but we'll fix that like i said not perfect but it's getting there and it's mostly just the pot smoothing as soon as i turn that off we have no issues moving around so um that's good to know because then i at least know where the problem is uh, here we have a little ducky in uh, a bathtub Lots of fun, has no point and no use, and of course, guy reading. But let's head over back to the editor and um, let me see where this left. Right, this is another one where I can show you the next step. Now that these guys know how to move around and stay hidden from enemies, um, we of course need them to back us up. And this is a perfect situation. Uh, we have a door here and a door over there. Uh, we'll be moving to this door and the other squad will automatically understand that this door is another entrance to that same area so they'll be moving over here and then we can breach from two ends which is um well actually the first intelligent use of all the systems i've built with this so let's just uh, split these guys up let's have them stand over here and as you can see we're at the door and they already noticed that there should be another door so they're now positioning themselves over there and we can breach both doors and shoot from two sides and I'm only controlling this guy over here so um, this is pretty much the stuff I wanted to build into the game and this was also the hard stuff uh, the next phase and the next problem is uh, coming up with interesting things for them to do this is an obvious one if we're at one door there's another door move over there 
but we're going to have a lot of other situations where we'll have to make sure these guys do interesting things like flanking the play the enemy or uh, it's pretty much going to tie into me designing levels and then coming up with um, great ideas for them to take care of enemies or move to certain spots things like that it's going to be a blend of level editing um, ai coding and um, many weeks of work now one final thing um, how do these guys know that that door was uh, linked to the same door as this one is uh, room ideas every room gets a certain id number so this area is zero this room is nine this door has two areas that's a zero and a nine and guess what this door has the same two areas so um that's pretty much how they decide oh wait there's another door that has these two rooms we'll move to that door and uh, that's how it works so there's a lot of debug code now and if i turn on everything then uh it makes for an interesting uh view and a lot of stuff going on and this is all behind the scenes of what a game is doing a lot of stuff now this wasn't this was all new to me as well as game developer i never used things like this my ai my enemy ai is usually pretty simple uh, heroes of loot space grunts also top down games but the ai is based on pac-man uh, the ghost in pac-man just google for that it's pretty simple uh, they will just target the player's location either a couple of tiles in front of them a couple of tiles behind them or things like that and it usually works uh, works great but for this game, I just needed something more, something better. So I needed to learn a bunch of new things. And I must say, um, it was very daunting at first, but I'm very happy I did it. It was a lot of fun, especially because it actually worked. That made it a lot more fun than if it hadn't, I guess. Uh, the video, I'll link it in the description below, explains all of this a lot better and even a little bit more. So it's just a couple of steps, um, add nodes to your level, uh, pathfinding from node to node or tile to tile or whatever, um, danger zones, danger areas, filter out everything you're not seeing. And then uh, the next step is coming up with logic. Uh, where should they be moving towards? And now that pathfinding is up and running, we can trust that they'll find their way and they're at target spot we just have to come up with the right target spots. That's the next phase. That's something I'm gonna be working on in the coming weeks. And uh, that's gonna be the fun part and hopefully that will bring the game alive and to that point where I, uh, where my vision was of having this squad, this team around you that helps you um, take down the enemy. Pretty cool stuff. But that's also it for this week's video. This is pretty much what I've been working on for the last two weeks. Uh, lots of fun and you've been able to see it on social media twitter facebook instagram discord i posted it everywhere steps here and there so make sure to check that out and um, that's it for this week's video like i said thank you for watching again uh, make sure to like subscribe and comment below and um, i'm gonna end this video with something that got posted to discord and i'm not gonna talk about it i like it i guess sort of it's uh, this is stuff that happens on the Discord and you'll probably have to just uh, hop on the Discord and be there without any comment. See you next week. Bye.